looking at their, their, their they got uh, three, I think th four guys at or near shooting 40% from three. What do you think about that when, as far as the challenges they offer? Yeah, no, that's, that's what they do. Um, they don't really run a lot of um, sets to get to their shots. They get them in transition, which is always tricky. Um, and they do a good job of spacing the floor and using uh, the big uh, Deong, number 34, the big center, 6'11". He and uh, Josh, or Carlton, I think, is two of the leading offensive rebounders. Um, so you use him as a roller, and they get you to bite on the roll, and then they swing it to the side you helped on. So we, we've got to be prepared for that. Uh, offensive rebound kickouts for threes. Um, but, you know, when you watch them, they, they play their best against the best teams. You know, look at – you know, what they did to Michigan at home, what they did to Memphis uh, at home, um, uh, coming back from 20 on the road against anybody is impressive. Um, but May Mayhead and Green, you know, I think they went 10, nine for 10 in the second half against Michigan. Um, those, those two guys are an issue. The guys coming along is their uh, freshman, uh, Johnson. Uh, Build a lot like Jamal, about six to one, one ninety, strong kid. Um, Perry, the kid that transferred from Louisville. Uh, they've got a lot of. They've just got really good pieces. And adding the uh, big kid, I think he transferred from uh, UNLV, has given them a, um, you know, what they need. An, an inside guy that can rebound, block shots. He doesn't really require uh, help because he can guard most centers one on one. So. Um, but everything starts with a three-point line for sure. We'll go to Joseph Duarte with the Chronicle. Joseph, go ahead, please. So in sort of playing off of that, uh, you, you mentioned it a little bit after the last game, but, uh, you know, the, the defending the three uh, in terms of, of, of maybe the improvement there or something you, you feel like, uh, you know, that that's going to be a, a, an important part moving forward with, with the new sort of lineup that you have, the, the guys that you have in there uh, yeah. and how y'all, how y'all uh, address and approach that. Yeah, there's, there's such a, um, you know, it's, you know, the Tulsa game for the second half of the Tulsa game, I think we're up 12 with two something to go, maybe 245. And you know, they, they're just dribbling around, jump up and bang a three. You know, they're at 22 feet, and then they move to 25 feet. A lot of times when you're down, and I've, I've been on the other end of this too, when you're down, there's not a lot of pressure to, to make shots. That's when they make them. You know, um, but Green, the Griffin kid jumped up and banged three, and Kyler was out well beyond the three-point line. Uh, now, if those shots missed, you say, oh, you did a good job guarding the three. <laughs> he made them. So you didn't do a good job guarding the three. You know, it's not, this is, this isn't a science project here. Uh, the Horn kid, you know, Fabian and Fabian and Jay Wan, I, I'd like to say the only thing they didn't do was not let him get it off, but they guarded him. You know, um, obviously the, the point of emphasis, our last game, that was a huge point of emphasis. You, and you look at their numbers, say so you did a great job, but he missed some too. You can't take all the credit when you when you do something and statistically it shows up. Uh, but our kids played hard. You know, we 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 know going into Central Florida this is going to be a, a tough game for forty minutes. You know, that's going to be our question the rest of the year. How how can we finish games um, um, with our lineup? You know, so, there's so many variables that's outside of. Um, uh, you control a little bit, foul, foul trouble, who's on the floor, fatigue. Uh, I think we can keep our front line fresh. The biggest thing is the backcourt. Thank you, Joseph. We'll go to Greg Bailey with KTRK. Greg, go ahead with your question, please. Hey, Kelvin, I, I think last time I'm, I'm trying to read my handwriting here. I, I think you were joking with us that, that Kyler Edwards is not a burner. Um, what, what are some of the, the traits that he has maybe that, that we don't see 
in terms of his ability to to recognize what defenses are doing, um, constantly being ready to uh, to pull the trigger uh, with the, with the kind of streak that he's on for you. Well, he came from a program that ran motion offense, and they were really really good at it. But he was not in many pick and rolls. Here, we use we use the pick and roll for a lot of things. You know. Um, you know, we we have a name for almost everything we do. Uh, you know, Spanish Spanish screens. Um, you know, uh, weak side flare, weak side double, weak side trip, whatever whatever we're trying to do away from the ball. Um, but Kyler's been here long enough, and when you know, Trevon was usually the our secondary ball handler in pick and rolls because Tremont was really good in, in pick and rolls. Uh, Marcus is markedly uh, better uh, at it. Dejan Giroux was so good at it. Galen was so good at it. Rob Gray's the best we've ever had at uh, playing in and reading pick and rolls. Against San Diego State, I think he had 39. You know, we, it was basically the same action, but it different, you know, different ways to get to it. Um, but uh, Kyler, I think starting with the USF game, uh, started getting comfortable. But also I think when kids know that they're going to play 35 minutes, 37 minutes, I think there's a calmness that comes over them. I think there's a um, um, feeling that, you know, if I miss a shot, of course, I never take kids out for missing shots. And you know, unless it's just a horrible shot, or I think it's a selfish shot. I don't let those things happen. Um, but Kyler's an unselfish kid. He's a good basketball player. Um, you know, if you if you were to evaluate based on numbers with 10 being great, I don't know that he's a 10 at anything. I'm not even sure he's a 9. But he's pretty good at just about everything. Um, his athleticism is more vertical than it is lateral. Uh, Dotson was like that. Um, but Kyler, you know, we're, what, what we're really working on right now is, is spacing the floor, but, but having three guys in different kind of looks and actions, they all can play pick and roll. Um, Tajay going left, Kyler going right, and Jamal going downhill. You know, we're trying to, to figure out how we can do that to play around Josh and Fabian, you know, and that just gives us, you know, just opens everything up. You know, these we're working on things now that we have to work on. We didn't work on, you know, September, October, November, December. We didn't work on any of these things. But you know, with our new team, you know, uh, the strengths of the team is different now. You have different personnel playing most of the minutes. You know, we're not we're not nearly as good a shooting team. Like somebody would say, well, we didn't, you know, we didn't shoot the ball very well. Well, we may never do that. And we don't have great shooters. That's that's not an opinion. That's a fact. You don't have to look at the numbers and tell that. I see them every day. Thank you, Greg. We'll go, to, we'll go to Chris Gardner. Chris, go ahead, please. Coach, excuse me, Coach, how much of an honor is it for Jarris Walker to be named McDonald's All-American? You know, you know what's funny is um, uh, I was – with him today, he was named McDonald's All-American. Uh, Qantas and I flew to uh, uh, Bradenton, and uh, IMG had a game that night. I had no idea that that was the day it was coming out. I got a call from a buddy to tell me he'd been named the uh, um, to the team. Uh, um, but you know, I, it's not. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about that. You know, when you're in our situation, you, you mind. Um, Karen keeps me updated on uh, current events around the world when I come home at night. You know, so a lot of nights I'm sitting de sitting at dinner. She's sitting with me, just filling me on what's going on. <laughs> um, but I, I I wasn't aware of the McDonald's thing. But his mother and father was there. His uh, coach at IMG. Um, but they had three kids off that high school team: Keontae George, Jane Bradley, and. Um, uh, Jarris, I watched watched them all. I, I, I mean, that's a that's an unbelievable high school team. Um, but Jarris was thrilled. You know, when those kids get named that, it's um, 
there's so many excellent players. You know, like Terrence Arsenault. You know, Terrence Arsenault <clears throat> um, is good enough to be a McDonald's All-American, but you could probably send up about 25 kids. It's, you know, usually when kids don't make the team, people start talking about politics, and maybe it is. I don't know. I, I don't even know how, how they pick it. I don't know who votes on it. I don't know anything about that. But um, happy for Jairus because he's he's a good player that um, has put in a lot of work. Hey, how you doing, Coach Sampson? Good day, Anna. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Well, you you kind of mentioned finishing games, and this my guess my question is: What concerns are you having as far as your team finishing the game? Is it the lack of depth or the kind of way that you would finish the games because you listed off for? number of players who would have the ball normally in their hands in years past. Yeah, I think we just move move on from that. Um, you know, preparing preparing these kids uh, for end of games, um, that's becoming more clear how we'd like to finish games and who we'd like to finish it with. Um, the question about concerns is, um, you know, we played somebody recently where Kyler played 40 minutes. That's a concern. And so we'll put so-and-so in for him. Well, we're trying to win here. You know, it's not, it's not that easy uh, taking him out. You know, it's not, it's, it's um, putting guys in and in the game, sometimes it's not really fair to them. If you're going to play them, you need to play them in the first half or play them early in the second half. But a lot of variables dictate that. You, that kid, we, you may be on a run. Uh, coach called timeout. Okay, now I don't have to take him out because he's getting a breather right now. Uh, could be uh, he only has one foul. Uh, the referees are blowing a whistle every other possession because of fouls or something. So, you know, I, I usually let the game. If you listen to this game, it'll usually tell you what to do. Now, it's not. It's not difficult. You know, I'm not. We're not here doing cell research now. It's basketball. It's a simple game. You know, just don't overcomplicate it, and I never have. Time for a couple more questions. We'll go back to Joseph Duarte. Joseph, go ahead, sir. Kelvin, uh, yesterday at the end of practice, uh, and, and really a, a lot of the days since he arrived, uh, Emmanuel Sharp was out there getting some, you know, getting the work in and, and shots. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, uh, other than, you know, still coming back from, from, that, from that leg, what – what does this time provide or, or what, where do you like to see that the development phase of things come into play with guys that are in mid-year, but obviously aren't going to see the, the court in, in games? Yeah. Now he's a young kid. Uh, he, um, you know, he's not coming in here 18, 19 years old. Um, but, you know, I, I, it, the only things I really enjoy uh, uh, seeing Emmanuel's situation it's how these kids embrace him. You know, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, I see him on the plane. I see him in a hotel. I see him in our meetings. I see him in our meals on the road. Um, here, you know, when I come in every morning, I usually go right to John's office and uh, get an injury report. Um, then I go over, then I go over to the, uh, then I go over to the um, um, weight room. And there's always Emmanuel in there with uh, Bishop and Bishop's um, intern. Um, then you look down on the court. When I come up to the third floor and I look out my window, he's pushing a sled or he's uh, running sprints. Um, but because of his injury and because his surgery and his timeline for recovery, he wasn't going to be able to play high school basketball this year anyway. Uh, and then once I heard all those uh, reports and reviews and what's coming on. That's when what. That's when I had the conversation with his mother and father. Now his mother was a uh, Canadian female athlete of the year. Uh, she was a tremendous uh, basketball player in Israel, um, and so was his dad. His dad was a I think twelve fourteen hundred point score at USF, and he played professional basketball for years and years for. Uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv, which is one of the top EuroLeague teams. Um, but I said, look, here, if he's not going to play, let's get him 
graduated from high school. He's a really smart kid. So that wasn't going to be a big issue. Uh, let him graduate from high school and, and let, let us have him second semester. Um, we'll use that semester. He's going to get hands on every day from John and uh, uh, Bish um, working toward his ultimate goal, which is to come back healthy. Now he can compete in all the non-contact drills. I put him in, you know, he may, you know, I don't do a lot of contact stuff right now because I'll hold my breath every time we do anything live. You just can't because we can't afford another injury, obviously. Um, but um, Emmanuel's, <laughs> Chris, you know, we recruited him for a reason. I mean, I, I saw this kid play a lot of basketball. Um, uh, this is good for him. You know, the, the goal, the goal for him is um, can, if he can get, I mean, we're almost in February. So I, I don't worry about what he does this year, uh, this season. He may not be 100% banging heads with us until April. And that's fine. But whatever his timeline is, I just want him to be um, in the best shape he can be in, but also be in the best, best health he can be in. That's, that's the most important thing right now. Uh, we'll go back to Mark Berman, please. Mark, go ahead. Kevin, how cool was it to have Andre wear at practice? Well, it just shows you generational. Our kids didn't even know who he was. You know, our kids aren't from Houston. They don't. They didn't follow college football in the eighties. You know, if, you know, uh, if Billy Sims. You know, I was around Billy Sims a lot in Oklahoma. Billy Sims walked in our gym. What do you think our kids would say? They'd say, "Who's that?" You know. Now, I think once I introduced him and told him that he's a former Heisman Trophy winner, and he's great ambassador for University of Houston. Uh, our kids perked up then. But, you know, our, our kids know nothing about anybody that played in the uh, 80s or 90s, uh, maybe the 2000s. Um, you know, uh, believe it or not, Mark, there's going to be a generation of kids coming up here. Um, uh, maybe not in mine or your lifetime that's never heard of Michael Jordan. That's just, that's just life. You know, it's, uh, how cool was to have Andre Ware? Uh, it was cool for me. I'm not sure about them, but it was cool for me. I think it's cool for our coaches. But uh, I've always had a lot of respect for Andre. Um, I, I, I think the, uh, before the game, uh, Andre and um, uh, Jim Nance and I, I were on the field <clears throat> talking, and Andre said he works with a uh, group of kids. He said, could he bring them to practice one day? I said, sure. Just shoot me a text when you'd like to, and I'll get Lauren to set it up for us. So he shot me a text, um, I think Monday, um, and I texted him back, said, Lauren will be contacting you, and lo and behold, he brought his team and a lot of their parents and stuff to uh, practice yesterday. They're just young kids. I think they're most sixth and seventh graders or fifth graders. Um, but our, our kids are really good in those situations with other kids. I, I think that's what they enjoyed most. Do you give him any coaching advice, Kelvin? No. Since, since he's sort of a basketball guy now? No, he doesn't need my um, advice. I'm pretty sure Andre's a lot better at that stuff than I am. 